Ivan.
it's a good thing. You're for helping a couple of inches design on the ice cream. So, this is all kind of stuff in the back. Hope you have to be. Hopefully, it doesn't come apart and you want everything away. True. <laughs> Well, I hope you had a chance to. Yes? We saw a good one in the backyard a couple days ago. Oh, All right. Thank you for your start to give you a good one. Any other special announcements this morning before we begin? So let's take a moment and invite the family to answer. Thank you. 
for each one that's come to mind. We praise you, O God, for those who have left this world, passed through that veil of death and into life. We pray for you, God, for our those dear ones that help to save and hold us and continue. As we request that your Holy Spirit works in our minds and hearts, bring our awareness of what we've been taught and what we've witnessed. We pray that you for each of us. God, we do know this is a thing to a wrestling for a part of time, given to the quality. Many who, for whatever reasons, have not had hope of it. Gracious and loving relationships that we may treasure. Yet we know more love. No matter what your love that is founded upon Jesus, our Savior, came to show us your great love. That while all of us were lost in salvation, Die for the sinners, rescue us. Make it possible for us to know this great joy of the family of God. The Lord of Nifty, all of those also who are on our hearts, who know who family, those on our prayer list, we pray for them that we can lift them to you and trust them to your care. And see on their behalf as often as you bring them to mind. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to stir our hearts to sharing the good news that we know in Jesus Christ. To the place, especially in the reach of our minds, one or two groups who are within our area of influence. That you desire for us to cultivate. Have talking with, or have a meal with, or to stand and visit with the person in time and things like that. You can't sit there. You can have a relationship with the people who serve them. You can sit there with Jesus Christ. All around us, we all have those opportunities to be grateful for them. We pray that you will work through us and you have worked through the things that have gone before us. And they are with us in the encouragement of life and your great love. Thank you especially for those who are gripped by whatever reason gripped the darkness to it. We pray that the power and spirit of life in Jesus Christ. Will shine upon them, helping them to know that they are loved and treasured by them. We pray for all of those, O oh God, and who, who are serving in the military, that your blessing upon them, that you keep them in your mercy and peace, and that you can correct them. We thank you for all who serve on our behalf. These things are made more than bring to you. Thank you. 
So often we do ministry, obvious need that we have the chance to speak to bear fruit, bringing troubles that folks have been facing. We also thank you for allowing us to enter into those times of giving. Thank you. 
pray for a moment, God. Lord, we do thank you for our mothers. We thank you that you have called us to continue to lead us in loving them, honoring them, obeying them, because it's, as you say, a commandment with a promise that our lives will be well and will live faithfully in your presence and with one another. That's the blessing of Father and Mother Jim to have a wonderful day. We pray in your peace for the continue to rest in our hearts now and always. In Jesus' name. So this is love. Going to church, doing what your mom tells you to do. Please keeping your room clean, all that kind of good stuff, right? In a text that we heard from First John, by this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey God's commandments. For this is the love of God that keeps His commandments, and His commandments are not. Burdensome. They're not meant to weigh us down. Think for a moment about God's design for us. If you look back in Genesis, as we read that wonderful account of God creating humanity, and I put that matter everything else. Very end of the last part of creation in that account. What does it say about the woman and the man that God created? It tells us good. If I created us to have a relationship with God and with each other, it's good. And you know, I hope that as you reflect upon your life, you can see that a lot of us learn things in your life. But is everything about your life? And as tempting as it is sometimes to do what the next part of that story is to read on in Genesis, the next account. After Adam and Eve have their first two sons, and they come to worship God and Abel's sacrifice, honors God, pains for whatever reason, but it's not. And yet God tells Cain that if he'll do the right thing, he'll be okay. Instead of heeding God's call and whatever it meant to God for him personally, what does Cain do? He climbs on his brother, justifies in his mind and he says, but his brother is going to be wrong. Yet, 
in our culture, it's not just our culture. The part of those ancient accounts in the scriptures, every civilization has wrestled with these issues. What does it mean to know love? To love that we've been created to, because we, we know that this is a part of who we are. On Mother's Day, we celebrate the wonder and the greatness of having mothers. For many of you being mothers, blessed by being gifted. It strikes me as being interesting that so often we lift up the joy and the wonder of life. The unselfishness of giving of oneself. Great life and the nurture life that we see. How many times do we read stories or see movies or even in real life experience accounts where despite great struggles and difficulties, a mother brings a child into the world and the next scene that we're presented with is one where everything seems to be wonderful. And without denying that, it is. Yet, is that love? Expression of love. It doesn't stay that way, does it? Doesn't take long before the demands and the needs of the for children. On throughout life, and as we embrace far beyond childhood, our later years, one of the things that most of us talk about being one of the hardest things about dealing with growing old. The challenges, the difficulties of not always being able to do what we would like, but keep the loved one that we have go through difficulties. Not being able to live in a state that would hurt much longer. God reminds us, as a church, that we know love is more than simple expression. Certainly, love should be bathing all of these things that we see and hear about and we live. It's far more than that. Love is living into the relationship that God has given us. Discovering the beauty and wonder of God's love for us. Accepting it, allowing His love to transform and renew and refresh us every day. Every day. Talking about mothers, love. Always just giving our children what they want. We live in a culture that a large portion of it certainly presents that kind of messaging to us. That if you love your children, meet them as they are and embrace anything and everything that they want to be and to do. Well, we all know that we do need to be people where they are and embrace them as they are, but we always believe that love is whatever it is that they currently want to do. This may sound silly, but I can recall a time when I was probably about five years old, and I was not happy with my mother. And for some reason, she would not get in to me. And so I told her I was going to leave. So my mother gave in and gave me everything I wanted, right? No, she did. So I ran away with that thing. And trip all the way out the front door across the yard 
looking both ways, across the road, over into the ditch, down out of sight, and I sat there and thought I was going to show off. About mid to late afternoon, I decided that I needed to go home. I was starting to get hungry. And lying there in the ditch wasn't such a great thing to do. So I went home. Mom was glad to see me back. I didn't say a whole lot about it. Is that silly to some? But I'm a little bit silly at all. I'm just informative. Most of us have experienced that, fortunately, in our relationships with our mothers. And even if we haven't, even if we know of someone who had a terrible life, I had a, a, a friend who was classmate of one of my brothers, who spent most of his childhood years living with other people because his parents were not able to care for all the children they had. For whatever reasons, and there were lots of excuses that the folks made for why they were such failures. But regardless, he loved his parents. But they weren't able to provide for him the way that most of us from our parents. And God shows us in Jesus Christ. Love that is deeper and perfect and makes us happy God. And offers us the kind of life and the hope and the joy that we can have. The faithfulness and the blood. Perhaps one of the best ways to describe this that I've come across for just the other day, and maybe some of you saw this, but we need to scrap you. John Walt wrote about he called it the difference between supermodels and saints. He describes actually the way that the world wants us to think of mothers and women, and that's the way that God has intended for them to be. The New Testament has a word for us. What he calls supermodel. The word is in Greek, holy one or saint. Where the idea of a supermodel is all about maintaining a flawless outward appearance, the notion of a saint centers around a deep internal magnificence. It manifests not only through our appearance, but the quality of your life, the character, the depth of love in the relationship. Albert David spoke of holiness, saying, True holiness is a witness that cannot be ignored. Real sainthood is a phenomenon to which even the worldly pays tribute. The 
how the life of our Christ and his all is going to rest and subdue those who are born to tears by our thin version of Christianity and totally uninterested in the Christian We need even more saints on earth, not just in heaven. I just, as I was reading this, it reminded me of mothers and God's vision for us in our relationships with each other. How it is that in our culture we so often focus on just the outward, or the momentary desires and interests that we may have in life. That God has given us this The folks who have committed their lives to that which is good and holy and true as a church, we want to lift up as you serve and as you honor God, and to live faithfully for Him. Think of some of those wonderful witnesses in the scripture. Think of Hannah, the mother of Samuel, who yearned to be blessed by God to have a child. And when she was granted that then in her life and that child to God. He goes so far as what we may not quite understand when, when he was old enough taking him and giving him to the service of the Lord. Though she continued to visit him and to bring clothing to him year by year. What it means to be so invested in him. Honoring what God is doing in the lives of those around us. Certainly our children, but not just our children, but those around us that we are able to serve and honor. On this day, when we celebrate as we rightly should, the joy and the gladness and the goodness of mothers in our relationships, we wanting to thank and honor each of you. At the same time, let us admit. Showing the world the kind of love that builds and inhabits and draws them and continues to pass in the moment. God has given us this great, great love. Thanking you for for women who have been committed to you that we've never met, perhaps from generations or in other parts of the world who are serving. And giving up their lives to be all of service just as much as we need. Thank you, Lord, for having such a vision of life and relationships that you created us to live in this. To be blessed by being gifted with this marvelous privilege of life. How could I ever repay? 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 In Jesus Christ, we can become a part of your family, the children of God. So what would bring you?
I invite you to stand as we sing together our soul to him. Heaven of the Heavenly Father. Praise him together. Thank you. 